Welcome everyone to the Catlin Auto Cast post game edition. My name is Peter Klein. Thank you very much for tuning in today. We are two games into the season for the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, the run differential is even how we got there. Little rocky, but either way, it's fun to have baseball back. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Let's get right into it. Um, Tale of two games, really, these first couple of games of the season for the Toronto Blue Jays. We will start with uh, the most recent game here, Game 2, Friday afternoon at the House of Horrors. That is the Trop, and it was a House of Horrors for Beau Bichette again as uh, defensively a bit of a rough one. And look, like the, the, the ball that he's charging, that's a really tough play. He absolutely makes it a bit more difficult on himself, um, and... This is the good and the bad with Bo, right? Because how aggressive he is and how he gets to baseballs and stuff like that, um, when it's great, it works really, really well, right? Like that that is the the, the story of this guy is that it is and it's tough to limit him because he is so effective just based off of like how aggressive he is, but that aggressiveness can come back to bite you, whether it's chasing a ball into center field that he shouldn't in a playoff game, leading to a collision, leading to a collapse, leading to the Blue Jays' season being over, um, not comparing game two of a playoff series to game two of the regular season, but this was one where if you play that, like, quite frankly, a normal-ass shortstop, you make the play, you shovel it to second, they go to first, boom, double play, fantastic. Um, instead, the bases are loaded, and then Josh Lau hits one into orbit, and all of a sudden a one nothing lead turns into a 4 nothing deficit, and you're done. You're cooked from there. So that was a really frustrating moment from a Blue Jays perspective, because, his, like I said, his aggressiveness gets him to stuff that not a lot of guys will get to, and he makes some plays that not a lot of guys can. But then he misses a lot of some plays that not a lot of guys miss. And that was incredibly frustrating. Um, he is and has been and always will be an inconsistent fielder at shortstop. Maybe there will be years where it just clicks and the, the fielding is on point. And, and maybe like a lot of times my joke is there's no gold glove vote in that guy's future. There could be with Bo because like there will be a year where it just all clicks and the, these types of plays, the regression type of plays, don't hit until the next year. And all of a sudden, he is a dynamo at shortstop. Overall, he makes more than he misses. It's just this miss was really frustrating. Um, another one on the defensive front. IKF has not been overly impressive in the first couple of games. And the, the caveat on all of these, right, is that it's early. It is the second game of the regular season. Let's not overreact to too much here early on. But for the Blue Jays, they went with IKF, the less expensive, and by the end of it, not overly that less expensive version of Matt Chapman. And you knew defensively you were probably going to take a hit. IKF has won a gold glove at third base um, in the past. Matt Chapman, very recently, uh, a gold glove third baseman. But the frustrating thing is like, okay, if you're going to take a step back there, maybe you take a step up in offense because this team needed to take a step up in offense this year. Well, IKF isn't that guy. You listen to a Yankee fan talk about their season last year for a second, and you know IKF isn't that guy. So then it's, okay, well, you're going with the cheaper option, so you get to spread that wealth elsewhere. It's like, well, I mean, they got Turner, but they got him at $12 million. Like, I just, the, every reason that you would have to explain IKF over what Matt Chapman ended up getting with the Giants, um, you can kind of go, well, did they? Because they kind of didn't with the the with, with this club and like he he gets a hot shot at third base in game one and he just doesn't like it, it kind of eats him up a little bit that it's a tough play it is what it is this second game though when the game is still kind of in the balance it's four to one he gets a ball hit to him at third and he fields it and he has to kind of double clutch and that they get the, the out at second but then the the turn to first is not in time there ends up being a single up the middle, another run scores, and 5-1 feels a bit more insurmount insurmountable. Now, they only scored two the whole game, so it really didn't matter. But it does, it's those types of plays that were getting made last year. And for Chris Bassett, who I thought was actually pretty good in this game, like, Lau hit the hell out of that baseball. But aside from that, this was a guy who overall I think was really effective. Obviously, he mixes, mixes pitches incredibly well. He had a high cutter going for no good reason, but it worked. Um, and he, like, just a lot of his stuff was working, and a lot of times he was getting hit. He wasn't getting hit that hard. It was just balls were finding their way through and missing shortstops, gloves, and stuff like that. And so 
it's it, it's a tough outing for Bassett because it's going to look like he kind of got his head beat in by a division rival. Instead, I thought he pitched really well. It's just the team behind him kind of let him down. The last note on defense. I am getting concerned, and not everyone is the Rays, I understand that, but I am getting concerned that Alejandro Kirk is very runnable, run onable, I guess. Like, his pitch framing is exquisite, but he hasn't looked very good throwing the baseball. The, the one guy who he threw out, it was a hell of a play by Biggio at second base to turn back into the runner and make the play on a throw that was just off. Every other throw has not been close. And so teams are going to pick up on that. You can bet if Kirk is catching tomorrow, the next time Kirk is catching against Tampa Bay anyway, it is going to be like you're playing MVP Baseball 05 and it doesn't matter who's on second base or who's on first base. It's like you are just like hammering down that left trigger until the pitch goes and then off you go. Um, that's what it's going to be like. It's like, yeah, no, we got it. Every guy who's getting on base, we're running. Doesn't matter. Let's just see. Let's make him make a play. And that is going to put you in some difficult situations. It straight up stole a run for the Rays in the ball game today. So that's just something to watch for as we continue on with Alejandro Kirk. I don't know how long he is for the catcher position. Um, like, again, his framing is great. Uh, certainly not what Tampa Bay's was today, apparently, because they were straight fooling the umpires on a couple. And that was a really frustrating start to the game with Springer and Turner both going down on what should have been ball four. But... Not the reason the Blue Jays lost, but we'll, we'll see about Kirk um, as it goes along. Like I said, like this was this was tough for Bassett because th there wasn't a lot of hard hit balls in play, but he was always going to be the one who was probably most affected by no Matt Chapman this year because Bassett isn't overpowering strike you out. Bassett is balls get put in play, but not hit very hard so my defense can make a play. And in this game, defense didn't make a play. Vladdy misses the throw to first base. Um, like I said, IKF double clutches, doesn't turn the double play. Bo whoosh, missed him. Team had three errors in the ball game. Uh, not always the most reliable stat, but still, I think rather indicative of how this team played defensively, he needs a good defense behind him. And, like, I, I don't think you're pulling anyone for, like, um, Bassett starts or anything like that, but he just, he needs the guys behind him to pick it up, and in this game, they didn't. Offensively, um, this was not the best game for the Jays. Uh, you, you have George Springer hitting another home run for Toronto, and then they manufacture a run late after Turner's first hit as a Blue Jay. Um, he then advances, and then a sack fly ends up bringing him home, but I, I think very clearly the most important offensive note for the Blue Jays is Vlad Guerrero Jr. looks on to start the season. Uh, we talked about the new approach coming out of spring. He has absolutely bought in on that. They showed the chart on the Sportsnet graphic of where he has swung, and it's basically middle-middle. Um, like, A, he trusts him, his stuff that, like, yeah, I'll I'll wait till strike two. I can hit, I can hit with two strikes. That's fine. Um, and anytime he is getting his pitch, and this is something we noted in spring, the second the Blue Jays get their pitch, they're jumping on it. And it ended up working in game one, not so much in game two. A few hard hit balls, but nothing too spectacular. Um, but Vlad gets his pitch, and he is ripping balls. 110 mile an hour uh, single today. He hit that one to the moon in the first game. Even the first ground out of the year, he put it straight into the dirt, but at 108 miles an hour. He is making excellent contact. That is a great sign for the Blue Jays. This team is not getting to where they want to get to if Vlad is just good quite frankly. They need him to be getting a significant amount of MVP votes this season if the Blue Jays are going to make any kind of noise in the American League East. Baltimore looks good. Yankees look good. Um, that This is this is going to be a fight, and they need Vlad to be probably their biggest puncher, but it's great seeing Springer. It's early, but Turner and Bo haven't looked good in the first couple of games of this season. Um, going back to game one quickly, because I didn't get a chance to, to talk about it. Noah Khan concert yesterday and all. Um... Barrios was phenomenal, wasn't he? He was absolutely exceptional. He was locating everything. Um, even the home run that he gives up, it's a hell of a pitch to hit out of the ballpark. Um, it's uh, two strikes, fastball off of the plate, maybe a little bit higher than he would have wanted, but that's just, Yanni Diaz is legitimately, legitimately one of the best hitters in baseball. Like they flashed up, always hit 368 against the Blue Jays. You can't even be like, oh, Blue Jays killer. It's like, oh yeah, well, he does that to everybody. So that that's like that that's just one where you have to tip of the cap. Like, yeah, 
you got me, man. Um, but Barrios didn't let that rattle him at all. He settled in and pitched a phenomenal baseball game. And now I'll be interested to see how Kikuchi handles game three of this four-game series against Tampa Bay. They, they mentioned on the broadcast he got hit pretty hard in spring at times, but he was trying to work on a pitch. He was working on that changeup. So we'll see how he incorporates that into the repertoire um, and how the regular stuff kind of all falls into place. So an interesting one for the Blue Jays. And overall, like, they, they, they win a game 8-2, to they lose a game 8-2. to um, I do think there are more long-term positives to take from these first couple of games than long-term negatives. Bassett wasn't hit overly hard. The Blue Jays are hitting the ball pretty hard. Um, and it's a couple plays defensively that they'll probably make by May or June. So it's, it's a frustrating loss after such a, a high to start the season. But this is, I, I still think, a very good baseball team. And I, I think they're showing signs that this th this could be a fun summer. Now, I, I can't wait to clip this uh, sometime in June and when th we're just swearing about a bunch of 2-1 to one losses. But for now, it's so far all right for the Toronto Blue Jays for the 2024 season. All right, that's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, if you are listening in podcast form, you can watch these on YouTube. And if you just want the Catalan Autocast um, instead of like being... Uh, having it all thrown in with all the other episodes. It is just on the regular like video page, but also there is a set playlist called Catalan Autocast on YouTube that you can find them. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can get this in podcast form. Um, all the Couch Potato Diary podcasts available wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow me, like it says down there on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm at Primetime Klein. Also, twitch.tv slash Primetime PK. We've been doing some Blue Jay stuff so far. Kevin Kiermeyer awesome in video games. Um, so check that out. Uh, th this week is going to be a lot of wrestling, but in the future, we'll be getting a lot of baseball in there. So uh, make sure you follow along with all of that. Like I said, next week, a lot of wrestling talk as we are getting ready for the start of, uh, or as we are getting ready for WrestleMania, sorry, coming up um, this weekend. But there will be a Catlin Autocast on probably Monday uh, talking about what we saw over the weekend. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. I'm out.